There are a lot of different weather apps to choose from. There are live ones, local ones, ones for just about every sport, even ones for cat lovers. But why are there so many? Shouldn't they all report the same weather anyway? The thing is, they don't. So why are all weather apps different? As of 2018, there were 8,000 apps with the word weather in the title available for Android phones and 2,400 for iPhone users. The sheer scale of the market explains the huge difference in the appearance of weather apps. Some apps focus on the overall weather using friendly symbols we all recognize. Others focus on the weather across the next hour and some choose to highlight long range forecasting. Others choose cats. This kind of variation across different weather apps can be understood by developers trying to find a point of difference in the market to appeal to different audiences, but it doesn't explain why they can't agree on the weather. In order to answer this question, we need to understand how weather prediction actually works. Today's weather forecasts are largely driven by powerful numerical weather prediction systems. Imagine the Earth is divided up into little boxes, stacked up in columns from the land all the way up to the stratosphere. Meteorologists piece together huge amounts of data to work out what's going on in each box. Think wind speed, temperature, air pressure, and so on. Once they have numbers for each of these boxes, then they can calculate the differences between them. And this is how meteorologists build weather models to predict what's going to happen in the future. Although, as it's impossible to know everything about every inch of the world at any given time, meteorologists use estimations and historical forecasts from the same place and time to fill in the gaps. Inevitably, this leaves lots of room for error. Good afternoon to you. Earlier on today, apparently a woman rang the BBC and said she heard that there was a hurricane on the way. Well, if you're watching, don't worry, there isn't. Overnight, winds of 107 miles per hour swept through London. Whilst this goes some way to explain how we can get forecasting wrong, it doesn't answer why there's so much discrepancy between apps. After all, shouldn't they all be wrong in the same way and at the same time? Well, it all depends on which meteorological sources they draw from and how they interpret that data. Some apps simply churn out computer model predictions. Others have access to a greater level of observations. And then there are those that employ meteorologists to interpret and correct the data, particularly in cases of unusual or extreme weather. So which apps should you use? The variety of data sources, combined with the fact that most weather apps are trying to fulfill a specific customer need, makes it hard to say that one app is better than another. From day to day, Try using a short-term and a long-term app because it's best to consult multiple sources. And keep in mind that even the most accurate forecasts will get it wrong from time to time. Here's a handy tip. If your weather app says that there's 30% chance that it will rain between 11 and 12, that means that if you live this day 100 times over, on 30 of those days, it would rain at 11 o'clock. Which sounds pretty high, so maybe pack a brolly. <laughs>